everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Coppola. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for Genetech in the great state of New Jersey. Uh, I'm joined today by our illustrious Business Development Manager for Buildings and Industrial, Mr. Ty Miller. Say hi, hi to everybody, Ty. How you doing, everybody? Thanks for having me, Phil. Yep. Uh, for those of you that have been watching this series, you'll recognize Ty from our uh, from our last segment, uh, the the meet the meet the BDM uh, video. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, I'll throw a card up here so uh, so you can link back to it and, and definitely give that one a uh, definitely give that one a watch. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this video today and I've brought Ty in is because Ty is a, a, a bit of an expert on a product that we integrate very tightly with called Medico XT, which is an Asa Abloy product. Uh, here's an interesting statistic that um, that really goes to show just how few doors have intelligence. So if you look at an end user that has, let's say, 100 doors, what we find is 90% of those doors actually don't have electronic security on them. In other words, 10% of openings are intelligent. The vast majority of doors still rely on a physical key. Now, there is a method that uh, that we have to bring intelligence cost effectively to the 90% of doors inside of your organization that currently rely on a key that can easily be duplicated at a hardware store for $2. So again, I brought Ty in because Ty is, uh, is a bit of an expert on this, again, because of his background in regulated markets. Um, you know, th this is something that we're certainly talking to them about quite a bit. So Ty, Tell us a little bit more about Medico XT. What is it and how does it work with Genetech? Yeah, I think I think you you hit a lot of the key components of Medico XT there. It's it's a data on key or a data on card concept. Um, you know, you're physically bringing the rights of the access platform to the lock with a with a key. So this is a this is a Medico intelligent key that I have here. Um, so yeah, you're you're uh, you know, some people refer to it as sneaker net, where you're bringing the network to the door uh, via sneakers, right? Um, so it's it's a it's a, a a great way to distribute access control throughout your facility to those secondary and tertiary doors, uh, where you may not have put access control on them simply because of cost, right? right? Or or maybe you know it's difficult to get a wire to a certain area to a cabinet or you know even to uh, a, a piece of equipment or an asset that's not connected to your facility, you know, or your network. So um, unmanned infrastructure and, and cabinets that you see spread out throughout a city or, or along the highway. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. love the cabinet example, uh, especially now in the, in the current state of the world that we live in, hospitals. You know, hospitals are at a shortage of the personal protective equipment that the nurses and doctors and the healthcare professionals need. And typically, those uh, that protective gear is locked up in a cabinet. That cabinet is accessible, like with a passcode lock that everybody knows the passcode to, or a physical key, which again can be duplicated. Whereas with Medico XT, with an intelligent key, we can actually put your access control rules and schedules on a, for lack of a better word, a dumb lock. Right. Yeah. So how how does the locking mechanism differ than a normal keyed uh, locking mechanism? Yeah, and I've, I've actually got some of the components here today. I could I can show you uh, physically. Yeah, the but, um, you know, the, this is a, a key block that has some of the intelligent cores on it. Um, you, you know, here in the middle, you have an SFIC core, small format, interchangeable. I've got a, a Medico XT padlock here as well. Right. So the, as you said, there's no wires to these components. There isn't even a, a battery in any of these components. This is this is you know has a, a small microchip that can maintain the memory of the audit history. Um, but you're not you're not replacing any batteries in these components. You're not running any cables to them. Um, so you're you're actually able to outfit facility with thousands of doors in a, a relatively quick manner. And then you're able to, to populate that in, Jan in Genetech in a, in a matter of seconds. So, so where, how are you bringing the intelligence? Let's, let's use that padlock as an example. How are you pushing the rules to, to the lock? Yeah, so uh, great question. So we're programming this key 
within Genetech with this USB updater. Mm. So this USB updater gets connected to the security desk client, right? When you drop this key in, it pulls all those audits into Genetech in a matter of two seconds. Okay? It's also putting the access control database, like the card holders, the rules, the schedules, it's all putting that on the key? Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's a bi-directional, um, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing changes to the key itself, and then we're pulling all the audits from the key, from the history of, of that user throughout the day or the week. So um, is, it, is it that I'm taking the information from the database, I'm putting it on the key, and when I insert the key into the lock, the, it sounds like there's a two-way communication. So we're pulling the audits from the lock. So all the other people that have presented their key to that lock is getting pushed back to the key. And the key is also pushing the, the most updated um, access control database to the lock. You got it. Wow. Yeah, you're, you're establishing a virtual network, so to speak. So you, go, you walk out to the, the series of locks that you're going to use for that day and you're gonna insert your key, I'll, I'll do it right here on the padlock. So I'm gonna insert my key into the padlock, right? I get a green LED when I do that because I have access to this padlock. Wow. Now, when I did that, I'm obviously able to open the padlock because I have access. At the same time, I'm pulling all the audits from the Phil Capolas and everyone else that has gone out and, and, and accessed this padlock or tried to access the padlock. So if you tried to access it and you got denied, I'm going to get that access denied on my key, which I can then, you know, bring back to those audits back to Genentech. Sure. So how then does the information get back into Genentech? So I've taken my key, I've gone through my, my duty tour, I've accessed certain doors, and then what happens to that key? How does that information get back into Security Center? Yeah, so so I'm, I'm actually forced to bring this back to Security Center by what we call a revalidation period. So you can set a revalidation period for the key anywhere from one to 365 days. Mm. So if, if I don't revalidate this key within that revalidation period that I've set, the key's worthless, it stops working. So it's a way to, to sort of keep your arms around the security of the key itself. Now, to, to answer your question, when you physically plug this into the updater, that's when the keys and the audits are pulled into Genetech, but any changes that are made within the security center are also pushed to the key. Right, and, and I think that validation process is probably one of the most important aspects of this because if you think about a regular electronic access control system, traditional, like with proximity cards, you are sort of enforcing a policy. I can't get through this door unless I present my, my credential and so therefore everybody's going to present their credential because they want to get through the door. Now you do have certain instances in which, you know, you have doors that have piggybacking and tailgating going on. So then to enforce that policy, I'm going to put a turnstile in to force one person through the door at a time, or I'm going to put some other electronic means to, to track uh, that, uh, that the policy is being followed with a physical key. Once you hand out that key, the policy goes out the window. The validation process with the intelligent key enforces a policy. Because this is like one of the questions that I get all the time. It's like, oh, well, what, who's to say that the person actually brings the key back within a week, two weeks, a month, a year? You know, yeah. and the typical answer would have been in the past without the validation is, well, the key has a battery in it. The battery will eventually die. You have to charge that. But I think the validation process is probably a, a much more efficient way to get people to adhere to the policy. Because if you want to get into the facility tomorrow, you're going to need your key. You got to re, you got to revalidate your key for it to work. Yep. You know, and to speak really quickly on the battery life uh, that you mentioned, you, you know, the average user charges this a couple times a year. I've had this this particular key for six months now. I've never charged it. Mm. So. You know, it's definitely a function of how frequently you use the key because there is a, you know, a battery in this key. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's, you know, a few times a year for the average user, you get about 2,000 cycles of the key. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very long battery life. It's not, it's not cumbersome that you have to charge it like every night. Sure. Uh, but. So let's, let's talk real quick about reports and what we're able to do with these keys because, you know, 
you can't do a lockdown, right? So all these devices are, would be considered offline devices. If I yeah. make a change to the database for for every door in my facility, ostensibly I have to go to every door with a key to update that door's um, uh, schedules and database and and all that sort of stuff. Now, throughout the course of a uh, of a you know, a, a normal facilities every day goings on. I'm sure if you updated the keys, eventually every door is going to be interacted with. Yep. But what does that process look like inside of Security Center? Like what kind of reports can I run? Yeah, so you can you can run a report either on the lock itself. So I can run a report just like I would on any online door in Security Center. I could run a report on, you know, all of my Medico uh, locks that are out there or, or a specific lock. So I could choose this particular padlock, which has a, a number inscribed on the side from the mm. Medico. So that's what actually shows up in Medico when you import all these locks. You can obviously change it to read, um, you know, back alley padlock or, um, you know, uh, IDF closet or IDF cabinet, one, two, three, whatever you want to name it. But uh, you run a report on that specific lock and it's going to show you all of the transactions that took place on that lock and the beauty of it and this is the beauty of the unified platform with genetech is you can then drag those transactions into our tile pane and show the associated video with that lock oh, which, so just just like a regular door uh, these act like doors inside of security center it's very powerful because you have an offline component with no wires no batteries no anything yet you're seamlessly tying it to video in the unified platform Wow. So they're able to get that trend, that that contextual video that shows the transaction taking place, assuming there's a camera in the area. But right. you can tie that in the back end through through security centers. Really, really powerful. And you know, to to build on some concepts that we've been talking about in this series, uh, visual tracking, which could certainly be something that's used here, um, but also like uh, when when we're running reports and we're creating dashboards, and we're creating visual reports. Matter of fact, I'll throw a, I'll throw a card up here uh, for the video that we've released recently on, on reports and visual reports. So now we can not just restrict access to doors that never had intelligence on them before, but now we can start to see trends. Who's going into that janitorial door most often during what times of day and that might lead a facility and if we think about like the hospital example how many people are going in to get their ppe when are they going to get them what are the trends over time maybe i need to add more cabinets or you know change the way that people are, are accessing based on this really relevant data the data exists but if you have a physical key or a code that you can't report on then all of that really useful information goes off into the ether whereas with yep. this solution for a fraction of the cost of putting electronic security you're getting basically the same amount of data just not in real time Exactly. I mean, the, the, you nailed it, that the real time, uh, you know, isn't there, but you have the ability to take advantage of our visual reporting, which takes this to a whole nother level. You get to see the insights in the organization. You know, you could run a simple report on, on a card holder. So I described running a report on a lock itself. What if I want to run the report on Ty Miller? Mm. And I want to see everywhere that Ty Miller has been over the last week, or I could run it across all of my card holders and I could see anomalies. I might see, oh, how come Ty Miller has used his card or tried to use his key and got an access denied, you know, t 10 times more than anybody else? What's Ty Miller doing? And then you can start to dive in and, and investigate. Um, but yeah, it provides you a deeper insight into the organization of what's happening with your cardholder database than it would with just a, a, a mechanical key that you have no audit capability with. So Ty, I, I think that about sums it up. Uh, I don't think I could have said it better myself. So uh, I'm going to end it right here. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see a, an actual demonstration of this technology in action, I've included uh, all of Ty's contact information. All of my contact information is below. Um, contact your local regional sales manager for Genetech or your local sales engineer for Genetech. They'd be happy to set you up with, uh, with a demonstration of this. My name is Phil Coppola. Uh, I'd like to thank Ty Miller for joining me here uh, as well. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one.